Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, thanks for watching. It's been a while since I've done a video and I wanted to take this opportunity to have a bit of a catch up. It's certainly been a time we've all been going through, but hopefully we're on the road to improvement now. I thought I'd take this opportunity to answer some of the questions that people have asked on my previous videos and about the homestead in general. I haven't been there for quite some time, but by the time you're watching this, hopefully I'll have at last been able to get back there. As you can probably tell, this isn't my 200 year old cottage in County Leitrim. I've actually been working abroad, but not for much longer and I'll be able to get back there soon. These are just some of my thoughts and ideas at the moment without knowing what I'm talking about. Uh, but I thought it might be quite interesting to look back at them in the future with hindsight and see what the real life experience was actually like. So, let's get on with the questions. My initial reason for looking for a property was space, land and affordability. I follow a lot of people on YouTube and Instagram who have beautiful properties and homesteads and small holdings in places like Spain and Portugal and I have no doubt they're a little bit warmer and sunnier than Ireland is. But I just find Ireland so beautiful, with or without the rain, and it just felt like a good fit. The fact that it's so close to the UK makes uh, travelling to and from so much easier. And the transport system and language and socialising and shopping is all so familiar that it just felt like a good fit. I admit that my Gaelic is uh, non-existent at the moment, but that's something I'd looking to delve into as well in the future. I found the property on daft.ie, which is what I used almost exclusively when I was looking for properties to view with the hope of buying them. I did also spend a little bit of time looking at myhome.ie, but I felt that almost everything on there was duplicated on Daft, so that was my main focus. I did then look at some auctioneers' individual websites if I felt there was going to be some more details on there, but most of the information was on Daft. I bought the property for under €40,000, and most of the properties that I've been looking at from the beginning were between £28,000 and €50,000. I always knew I'd be looking at the bottom of the market, really and so I just had to look at things that I would be able to afford. That range of prices covers a whole variety of buildings. Some were in a great state and had full services in place, water and electricity, and great roofs and doors and windows, but that also included some places that were literally just a pile of rocks. So you get to see a wide range. And obviously, if you're looking to buy a property, particularly with land, for less than 50,000 euro then you have to expect there's going to be a bit of a project to do but I think it's all about the potential. When I bought the property I paid around 650 euro for solicitor's fees, uh, 540 euro stamp duty, around 440 for property registration and about 60 euro as the search fee and that had VAT on top, which came to a total of around 1,800 euro. Of course, that's just my situation and my solicitor. I'm sure it does vary to some degree, but those were the main categories that I paid fees on. Once I'd made an offer and had it accepted, the process was very straightforward, if a little slow, but then we probably all say that don't we I did find some things early on a bit frustrating with communication with the auctioneers sometimes it would take a long time for them to get back to you if you made an inquiry or not even hear anything back at all so that was a little bit frustrating and I know that Maggie McGee has talked about some of these issues on her fantastic channel Cheap Irish Homes so I'll put a link to that down below and definitely go and take a look Homestead is in the northwest of Ireland in the northern part of County Leitrim between Drumkeeran and Manor Hamilton. I'd looked at a range of properties in quite a wide area, including County Sligo and County Mayo, County Roscommon, and County Leitrim, and I just found the combination of open countryside, farmland, hills, lochs, and access to the wild Atlantic Way it was just the perfect combination, really. It's a beautiful spot. Mm -hmm. 
no and no. <laughs> I purchased the property at the beginning of 2019 and did have a couple of days there before the world was turned on its head and have been unable to travel back to Ireland since then really. The past couple of months I've been working abroad which has taken a little bit more time but hopefully within the next week or two I'll be able to get back there and get on with things again and see what what's what. Well I'm far from an expert but I think Ireland is renowned for its rain and I think deforestation historically must have had an impact on how the land deals with all of that water. The weather systems coming across the Atlantic are always going to impact Ireland first before the rest of Europe so that would make sense. All those things must have played a big part in shaping the landscape and I definitely saw a lot of bog land when I was touring around and viewing properties. I've started to look into and learn a bit more about permaculture and regenerative agricultural practices and I definitely want to plant more trees and shrubs on the land although there will be some trees that I'm taking out they're very close to the cottage and would definitely cause a lot of damage if they came down and I'm planning a productive orchard behind the cottage as well the copse of beech trees will obviously remain because that's beautiful and I want to plant as many shrubs and productive plants as I can not only for myself but also to help the soil and I do want to maintain the fantastic views down the valley across to Loch Allen Yes, the Japanese elephant in the room. Um, I wasn't fully aware of the knotweed when I bought the property, but there's definitely quite a sizable patch there. Um, and I don't mean to negate the seriousness of that or that I need to focus on doing something about it. But I do feel that with Japanese knotweed, there's always quite a panic about it. And the last 18 months has given me some time to do a bit more research find out some other ways to deal with the problem that perhaps don't involve napalming the whole area. So there will be a video coming soon as I start to try and figure out the best way to deal with that. Um, so watch this space. The last time I was at the property it had been a particularly wet period and there was a lot of standing water and running water as well along the land. Um, there's definitely one well and I believe on some old maps there is a second well and a water course which seemed to be evident but that might just have been the weather that we've been having at that time. Um, I'm very grateful that I've managed to be in touch with the family of the, some of the previous owners of the cottage and they have talked a little bit about collecting water from the well so that's something I'm definitely going to be looking into quite soon. just started looking into this so I shall let you know but another follower did suggest that it might be around 1700 euro for the reconnection and perhaps over 3000 euro for the electrical works to take place obviously every every situation will be different and I hope that there's enough modern wiring or systems in place at my cottage so it won't be too expensive but we shall see Whilst I've been away, some neighbours at the homestead have let me know that the road leading to the townland has actually been improved, so I'm looking forward to <laughs> driving along that. When you turn off the road and onto the lane that leads up to the cottage, this is just a trackway, and it is quite difficult, almost impassable at the moment. It's overgrown and definitely needs some attention, so that's probably the next thing on my list. But once you're at the cottage and once that driveway has been looked into, trades will be able to easily get up to the cottage and I'll be able to bring materials that way. I'm also looking at hopefully starting an entrance towards the north of the land but I need to look into that a bit further. That's a good question. Uh, although like many of the cottages that I'd looked at around the county and around the country had been modernised mainly with their concrete render this is an original stone-built cottage along with the barns and the outbuildings, so I believe they are the original properties on that site. I think I've identified the property in the 1911 and 1901 census, and then a look at some older maps places the same buildings in the same position, 
that matches up with the Griffiths valuations maps and back to 1883 and actually some older maps back to 1830s as well. So a rough estimate would be the best part of 200 years old at least, which is amazing. Yes, but I don't think at the moment I'm providing much value to anyone who would consider uh, supporting me, especially if I'm only be able to put out one video every 18 months. The Buy Me A Coffee link is on the website and I will consider uh, Patreon in the future, but perhaps when I feel I can give back a little bit more to anyone who's supporting me. So there we have it. Thanks for asking all those questions and I hope you found some of the answers interesting. If not, <laughs> Or if it raises even more questions, let me know in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you all. As I said, hopefully by the time you watch this, I will have been able to get back to the homestead. So watch this space for plenty more videos coming, at least over the next couple of months. When I get back there, see what's happened, what hasn't happened, and how I can start working on the place again. Thanks so much for the support, and I'll see you soon.